Hey, Shalom, most high in Christ, bless you. Got Captain Ben Zion here with me, and I got here with me. Officer Messiah. All right, and today we're going to give you 15 minutes with the captains. All right, the name of this is going to be, um, what I named it, um, how to get my mother to believe. How to get my parents, my father, or my mother, or anybody to believe, all right? So I want to open up with just saying there's no magic scripture, all right? There's no magic scriptures that's going to make your mother starting to believe. It's going to be, it's no, it's not going to be a magic scripture to make your dad or your your auntie or your family member, your brother or sister to believe. There's no magic scripture to make them believe, all right? So I'm going to go through some, maybe some scriptures that'll help you, all right? All right, maybe to help you. All right, so let's open up with Matthew, right? Let's just see what Christ said. When you come into this truth, is everyone going to love you? All right, is everyone going to agree with you? Is, is everyone going to be in um, in agreement? All right, so let's read that right quick. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 34. Okay, come on. Think not. That I am come to send peace on earth. So this is Christ. All right. When you come into the body of Christ, into the understanding on who Jesus the Christ, all right, who he really is. He said, don't think that it's going to be peaceful because when he come all right, on this earth, he didn't come to send peace. All right. Come on. I came not to send peace. All right. Come on. But a sword. But a sword. Okay. Meaning destruction. All right. Come on. For I am come to set a man at variance. All right. So he come to set a man at variance. So when he says he didn't come to send peace but a sword, he's talking about it's going to be war. All right. It's going to be war, a spiritual war. All right. Come on. Right now. All right. Come on. Against his father. All right. And that war is going to be against the man's or uh, he or she's father. And the daughter against her mother. And the daughter is going to be warring against her mother. Come on. And the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. Okay, come on. And a man's foes. And a man's foes. Another word for foe is enemy. And a man's enemy, come on. Shall be they of his own household. They're going to be living with you, all right? The people that you're living with will become your enemy. The people that you are closest to will become the enemy. Why? Because you are starting to follow Christ, all right? So Christ said it himself. Don't think it's going to be a peaceful moment, all right? But it, he said it. it's going to be contrary to that. It's going to be war, all right, in your household. It's going to be war with your father. It's going to be uh, sisters. It's going to be war with your mother. It's going to be more, war with your, um, what it, it says, your in-laws, all right? It's going to be war. Was that it? It's more. All right, come on, keep reading. He that loveth father or mother more than me. But if you love your father or your mother more than you love Christ, all right? Come on. Is not worthy of me. You are not worthy to be in this truth. Come on. And he that love his son or daughter more than me. All right? And if you love your son or daughter more than Christ, come on. Is not worthy of me. You're not worthy to get the kingdom, all right? You're not worthy to be in um in, in, in to get the kingdom. Just put it like that. You're not worthy, all right? Come on. Let it. And he that taketh not his cross. All right. You got to learn to do what? Taketh not his cross. You got to take your cross. Come on. And followeth after me. All right. You got to take your cross and follow after him. All right. All your burdens. All right. You got to take that up and you need to follow after Christ. Come on. Is not worthy of me. All right. If you can't do that, you're not worthy of Christ. You're not worthy of getting the kingdom. Hope you understand that. So there's no magic scripture to help you help your mother come into this truth or your father. There's no magic scripture. All right. You're going to have to learn that a, hey, as a, uh, as a believer in the scriptures, there's something that I must do for my salvation. Give me that in Philippians two and 12, right quick. Philippians two and 12. Cause we get this question a lot. Like how can I make my mother believe you can't make her do anything. All right. Come on. The book of Philippians chapter two and verse 12. Uh huh? Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, mm -hmm. but now much more in my absence. All right, Christ came and died. Now, come on. Work out your own salvation. All right, and Christ, he said, look, do what? Work out your own salvation. He said, work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation. All right, that's what you got to do. 
All right? Work out your own salvation. With fear with, and trembling. With fear and trembling. All right? That means we're keeping the commandments because you are afraid of his judgments. All right? Let's get that right quick in Psalms 119 and verse 120. Why it says work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. Because that's what fear is. All right? The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 120. Huh. My flesh trembleth. For fear of thee. All right. Your flesh is going to be trembling because of the fear of God. Come on. And I am afraid of thy judgments. You're going to do what you're going to have to do to keep God's commandments, okay, because you are afraid of his judgments. All right. That's why it says you got to work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. Okay. So let's go from there. All right. Um, give me give me, ex give me Exodus 20 and 12, right? All right. So with working at your own salvation with fear and with trembling, you still have to learn how to deal with your parents in this truth. All right. All right. You still have to learn to deal with your parents in this truth. All right. So let's see what the law said. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Honor thy father and thy mother. All right. I said now disrespect. Honor thy father and thy mother. The scriptures tell us to honor. All right. All right, you you put your mother and your father in an honorable position, all right, because they are the ones who brought you into this world. She nourished you, all right, until you was able to eat on your own, all right? You never disrespect your mother. I don't care what she don't believe. Just because she don't believe the Bible as you see it, that don't give you right to do what? To disrespect your mother or your father, all right, or anyone else, all right? Because the Scripture told us to honor our father and and who? Thy mother. And thy mother. Come on. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So I hope you understand that as long as you live, you still have to honor your father and your mother, whether they believe in this truth or not. Give me Jeremiah 3 and 14. Jeremiah 3 and 14 right quick. Because everybody's not going to believe you. Everyone is not going to magically be like, hey, such and such is right. Baby girl, right. My son, right. Okay, that's not going to happen all the time. Sometimes it do, sometimes it don't. Sometimes it take um, the parents longer than others for them to see, like, okay, he, 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 you know, he or she is right. Okay, come on, read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, and verse 14. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, uh -huh. for I am married unto you. All right. And I will take you one of a city. All right, when you repent. You know, the most, uh, Jeremiah said right here that the most high will take us one of a city. Come on. And two of a family. All right. And it's sometimes only going to be two people in your family. Sometimes you're going to be the only person in that city that understands Christ, that understands the Bible. All right. Or it may be two in that family. Or we know it's, you know, plenty of instances where it's more than two, but he said the least it, it may be two sometimes. So everybody in your family is not going to understand you. All right. They're going to think you crazy. They're going to say you're in a cult, okay? But when you was out doing all type of different worldly things, they never said you was in a cult when you was still going to Easter service and uh, Christmas service and watch night service. They never said that you was in a cult, okay? Come on. And I will bring you to Zion. All right, and he's going to bring us to Zion. Go from there. I want to get, um, give me Sirach 7 and 27 right quick. So rock chapter 7 and verse 27, going back into honoring your father and mother, whether they believe in this truth or not, you still must honor them. Come on. The book of Sirach, chapter 7 and verse 27, honor thy father with thy whole heart. All right. The scripture said that you got to honor your father with your whole heart, not half, but with your whole heart. Okay, come on. And forget not the sorrows of thy mother. And don't forget what your mother has gone through. All right. Even carrying you. Birth, giving birth to you, all right? The things that you've done to your mother, all right, before you come into this truth. A lot of us was going in and out of a jail, all right? A lot of us was going in and out the hospital. Uh, some of you women was out there, uh, your mother's worried about you running the streets, sleeping with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Uh, some of you were prostitutes, or some of you was us uh, strippers and stuff like that. You know, you brought your mother very a lot of sorrow, all right? Now you come into this truth, you want to try to beat it into them. There's no magic scripture. All right? You can't beat this truth into your parents, okay? Either they're going to start to believe 
or they're not all right the truth is not for everyone all right and um with that being said give me um give me timothy okay give me first uh timothy 4 and 12. the book of first timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. okay let no man despise thy youth but be thou an example you gotta be what an example you gotta learn to be an example all right to your to the to the non-believers you got to learn to be an example to your family members all right whether it's your mother your father your auntie your sister your brother learn to be an example come on of the believers all right come on in word you got to learn to be an example in your words okay in your words you got to choose your words carefully on what you what what you're saying okay come on in conversation your conversation you're no longer arguing all right you're no longer in a dispute with your parents okay when you come into this truth all right either they're going to believe or they don't don't constantly be going back and forth all right you change the way you speak about things if it's your father all he used to talk about is basketball lebron james and uh, uh cam newton or uh, uh sports and stuff like that or you know entertainment world talk about the worldly stuff change your conversations you have with them or um not have those long drawn out conversations about that let him see your interest somewhere else okay come on in charity all right in in love all right in all, spirit and in spirit they should know that your spirit have changed all right they should know these things by your example all right there's no magic scripture you can give them but you can lead by an example okay come on in faith all right in your faith is that it in purity all right come on give me that it that's it. All right, give me John 13 and 5. Let's see what Christ said. Because y'all got to remember Christ left us an example on what we must do. All right, everybody's not going to get this truth. That's what you got to understand. Everyone is not going to understand the truth. Okay, come on. The book of John chapter 13 and verse 15. Uh -huh. For I have given you an example. Because Christ wanted to leave an example. This is why he was doing this. Come on. That ye should do as I have done to you. See, understand that. You got to be an example. As Christ was an example to the disciples, okay? You have to be an example to your parents, okay? Uh, or to your loved ones that you're trying to get this truth to, okay? So you got to use wisdom, all right? You got to change the way you talk. You got to change your conversation. Change the way you show love towards them. Because you used to show love towards them doing what? Buying them gifts all the time, okay? used to do that all right so and another thing i want to say before i end it you got to give them plain scriptures quit trying to cut them all the time quit trying to tell them what they are not supposed to be doing all the time quit trying to tell them well you know you ain't supposed to be eating pork mama you know you can't be wearing a dress i mean you can't be wearing those pants you can't be wearing those tight pants dad you gotta stop smoking weed stop telling them that all the time they know you tell them once and they know after that you must give them what simple scriptures that they cannot deny for an example give me deuteronomy 28 verse 68 start them off slow give them the milk first you got to show them who they are in the bible okay once you show them who they are in the bible maybe they'll start to understand it all right because that's what first kings told us to do cause them to do what but think themselves once they start to but think themselves then they may be able to further their understanding on the things that you're trying to tell them all right come on the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. All right, so you got to explain to them what Egypt is. It's, it's going to be undeniable. All right, so you want to give them the undeniable truth, showing them that Egypt is referring to us as uh, this, um, referring to our place of captivity because we was once there in captivity, all right? Show them the basics. Come on. Again with ships all right with ships they can't deny that we came over here on um uh, cargo slave ships they that's undeniable all right come on by the way whereof i spake unto thee uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again all right come on and there you shall be sold unto your enemies and there you was going to be sold they can't deny that so those are the things that you want to try to show them that the things that they can't deny out of the bible first right now they could deny everybody they can try to deny where well, the Bible is um, everybody can be saved. They can try to deny that the law is done away with. But this right here, they can't deny it. You got to try to show them the old first and then show them the new. They've been learned, they have learned uh, the opposite. They learned the new 
covenant first before they learn the old covenant. That's why they're confused. But you have to go back and show them the basics of the old. Show them themselves in the Bible. All right, keep reading. For bond men. Yeah, we were sold for slave men. And bond women. And bond women. And no man shall buy you. All right, just stay in Deuteronomy. If you got to, just drill Deuronomy 28 if you got to keep going through scriptures with them. Quit trying to debate them on uh, whether Esau can be saved. Quit trying to debate them on whether they can eat what they want to eat and stuff. They, that's the things they want to do. That's what they want to love, and that's what they, that's how they've been conditioned to live. Show them the undeniable truth first, all right? And if they don't understand the undeniable truth that they cannot deny, they're not going to understand nothing else you're trying to tell them. They don't want to hear it. The truth ain't for them. All right. If they cannot bethink themselves and see themselves in the Bible first. So with that, hey, I'm going to end it right there. That's 15 minutes with the captains on how to make my mother or my father believe. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.